Okay, so my, well, my primary addiction is uh, food addiction. And, um, you know, apart from, you know, binging out in Chinese restaurants, I used to love buying bags of donuts and, and eating them, chocolates and biscuits. And some people really are addicted to food. Uh, and they, they are in a state of powerlessness. If they go into a supermarket aisle and they see some chocolates on the aisle, they can't stop themselves. They can't use their willpower to stop them, even if they're on a diet or if they say, look, I'm going to be good today, I'm not going to pick up those chocolates, they eat it. Now, apart from saying the obvious, which is like there are 12-step groups like Overeaters Anonymous or Food Addicts Anonymous, and various other 12-step groups, Grey Sheet, Grey Sheeters, there's various uh, things. Apart from the, one of the things is uh, addiction, and this is the thing for, for every addiction, whether it's food addiction, alcohol, drugs, uh, dangerous relationships, uh, you know, wanting to act out in some way on a computer, whatever it is. Uh, someone was actually sharing about this in the meeting today. Um, the, whenever the urge to do something which is destructive comes on, uh, onto you, it's like an energy, it's like a craving. Like you want that, you want that donut, you want that glass of alcohol, you want that drug or you want to call up that person that you know is not good for you, whatever it is. Now, here's the thing, it's really, if you can do this, um, you, mir miracles are possible. So I'm just going to say uh, that it is possible. You sit, you know, even though you won't want to do this, sit with the, the energy of craving for it. Don't, you know, you have an opportunity. Let's say it's a, it's a, it's a chocolate. But when I say chocolate, that could equally be drugs, alcohol, or picking up the phone to someone who's not good for you. It doesn't really matter. The energy, the vibration is still the same. When you have it, just sit down and, uh, and just close your eyes and let go of your thoughts and sit with that energy until it passes. Okay? And each time you do that, you'll be releasing that, that craving energy is, is, is limited. If you do it enough times, you'll get to a place of neutrality around your addiction because you have felt out that craving over and over again and you'll find that the cravings will come less often and will be less intense and you write them out and you get to a place of like neutrality or peace around it. Now with myself I was literally trying to kill myself with food so I had a life-threatening illness and when I tried to but I want to share this as, as a sense of strength and hope like, when I tried to uh, stop binging, the very first time I had a panic attack in the middle of the night and I binged on food, but the second time I had the thing, and we talk about uh, in this group the death of the ego. And the ego, um, the ego always wants to get its fix. And sometimes if you're a rock bottom addict, um, in the early stages of addiction, it can, be like, it can feel like you're going to die unless you use your addiction. That's what it feels like. It can be that intense. And I remember the second time I woke up with a panic attack, I said to myself, because I trusted my spiritual teacher, that um, I was willing, if, the, if I could die of that feeling, I'd rather die of the feeling than, than use. Okay? So it was like, uh, and when you have a panic attack, it's like you can't breathe, there's no air in the room, and it feels like you're dying. And... Um, but I knew my teacher was telling the truth. So I had the, the second time I had the panic attack, like my head was saying, like, go binge out from the food, numb yourself out. And uh, also the feeling was so horrific that there were thoughts like, this feeling will last forever, so just chicken out. You can't, it's going to kill you. But I, I just put on a, a DVD of my spiritual teacher, Dr. Hawkins, in the background. I sat on the chair and I said, like, if this feeling kills me, this urge, this, this craving, I'm willing to die rather than pick up on the food. So I'm willing to die on the chair rather than pick up. And it was, um, it was the first time I had this determination, like I will not pick up, and if the feeling kills me, that's all right. I was, willing to, I was literally willing to die. And, and it was 15 minutes. I didn't know how long it would be or whether it would kill me, but it was 15 minutes, and then the air started to come in my lungs. And there was a, three more panic attacks and then, you know, and it's like I'm t 10 years, 10 years absent. You know, I haven't had any problems with food for 10 years. In the last eight years, um, 
have had no body obsession whatsoever, only one day of food obsession eight years. So essentially in a position of neutrality, I used to be obese before, but it's essentially in a position of neutrality around food, there's no, no craving or desire for, for food. So I encourage you to sit with the feelings. The other thing you can do uh, on this, and I share this, we do the observer tool. Realize whenever you get a craving for, for a chocolate or for a drug, or to pick up the phone to someone, uh, you, you ask the question, what's observing the craving and the thoughts? What is observing the craving and the thoughts? And B, see if there's a witnessing of that addictive energy and the thoughts. If you're able to be in the witnesser and have that detached witnessing of the thoughts and the energy that's arising for the biscuit or for the phone call, then what will happen is you invite in a higher power and the energy can dissolve in a split second because you're, when you're in the ego, when you're identified with your thoughts and your feelings, it's like you're powerless. You'll act out because you are the thoughts and the feelings. It's like you, But when you are the witnesser of the thoughts and the feelings, suddenly there's a, de there's a space, there's a detachment from, what, from the program that wants to run. And that space is an invitation of spirit, which gives you the power to just disengage that mechanism. So that's a, a second tool to do with any sort of cravings for, for anything that you want to do. Um, a 12 step group, of course, is very, very good. And of course, in miracles as well. So those are things that you can do to disengage cravings.